Each month I host a live stream for my Patreon patrons where I answer their questions. And a few months back, <clears throat> one of them asked if I was familiar with what was happening in New Zealand concerning the teaching of creationism in classrooms as science. And I was not familiar with that, but I'm obviously very much against the teaching of creationism in the science classroom uh, because creationism is a religious myth. Um, so I dove into the rabbit hole to figure out what was happening in New Zealand. And what I found surprised me because I actually couldn't find any evidence that anyone in any position of authority actually wanted to teach creationism in the science classroom. And so I talked a little bit about that um, in the q and A. I I don't usually do a load of research for those. Um, so while I found the topic interesting, uh, I considered making a video about it, doing some more research, but I decided not to because it was so localized to New Zealand and it felt like an incredibly complicated situation that would be better handled by a New Zealander, ideally uh, a, a Maori or um, ideally a scientist, ideally a Maori scientist. And they were already addressing it. So I didn't think that my relatively unnuanced viewpoint was necessary. But now it's been a few months and this to-do is still to-doing. Um, it's officially become an international debate now that Western biologists like Richard Dawkins and Jerry Coyne have weighed in. And I was surprised because Coyne's recent absolutely frothing blog post <laughs> explicitly repeats this idea that the whole thing is at its heart about teaching creation myths in the science classroom. And I thought, hold on, is this the same thing that I looked into last year? Like, maybe I just didn't dive deep enough. Maybe I missed something about creationism. So I read Coyne's post, I read Dawkins' letter, I read a dozen other similarly very angry articles. And then I went all the way back to the beginning to see what kicked this entire thing off. And since I've already done all this dang research, I figure, you know what, I might as well share it with you in this video, just in case you hear about any of this hubbub and you're also interested in disentangling fact from fiction. So let's start at the start. Back in early 2020, the New Zealand government issued a recommendation that teenagers in the country and public schools should learn more about the body of knowledge created by the indigenous Maori people who still comprise about 15% of the country's population over the hundreds of years that they stewarded the island uh, before the arrival of Europeans. That body of knowledge is known as Mataranga, and it basically encompasses everything. You know, not just science, but also mythology and art and culture and history. Also, by the way, I'm going to pause here to point out that I'm going to mispronounce things. I apologize. Uh, in my very weak defense, if you check out some of my previous videos, you'll see that I mispronounce words and names from every culture equally, even my own. So I'm, I apologize in advance. Anyway, the recommendation from the New Zealand government was basically this, uh, equal status for Mataranga Māori in NCEA, develop new ways to recognize Mataranga Māori, build teacher capability and improve resourcing and support for Māori learners and te ao Māori pathways. Because again, you know, this is the indigenous population of New Zealand that still makes up a significant percentage of the population, and they've asked the government in the past to please beef up the educational efforts surrounding their culture, which makes sense. So the government formed a working group to address this issue, and last summer they released their slightly more fleshed out recommendation. Now, for the life of me, I cannot find this document anywhere. Um, I don't know if it's been removed from the internet or if it never hit it, but apparently read in part that a new course for teens should promote discussion and analysis of the ways in which science has been used to support the dominance of Eurocentric views, among which its use as a rationale for colonization of Maori and the suppression of Maori knowledge. 
and the notion that science is a Western European invention and itself evidence of European dominance over Maori and other indigenous peoples. Again, I can't find the original report, but that is the sentence that launched a thousand white men's blood pressure because it was included in a letter written and signed by seven academics at University of Auckland and published in a magazine called Listener. So that excerpt contains nothing about the teaching of creation myths in the science classroom or any other myths in the science classroom. It's literally just a suggestion that when you're talking to what we in the U.S. would call high school students, you know, teenagers, a significant portion of whom have Maori heritage, uh, when you talk to them about the history of science, maybe spare a thought for the fact that European colonists use their understanding of empirical science to subjugate the Maori and other indigenous populations around the world. There's nothing really controversial here. Uh, it's just a known fact. You know, the American School of Ethnology in the mid-19th century proposed a hypothesis to suggest uh, polygenesis, the idea that Native Americans evolved from a separate species and that, so they weren't truly human and, you know, we could be rid of them. In 1899, Nobel Prize winning scientist Sir Ronald Russ returned to Britain from Sierra Leone to report that in the coming century, the success of imperialism will depend largely upon success with the microscope, pushing this idea that superior science would not only aid the British armies by keeping them healthy from disease, but also the idea that colonial occupation of places like Africa was a benevolent exercise. A similar thing had already happened in the Amazon, where indigenous people were infected with the diseases of their invaders, and with no prior knowledge of those diseases, they were forced to go to their own conquerors for medical treatment. As science historian Rohan Deb Roy told the Smithsonian Magazine in 2018, Modern science was effectively built on a system that exploited millions of people. At the same time, it helped justify and sustain that exploitation in ways that hugely influenced how Europeans saw other races and countries. While this point is in no way up for debate by serious scientists and historians, it does seem to hurt the feelings of some people who would rather cling to the belief that Science is this objective process that exists completely independent of our culture. For more on that, check out this video I made last year on why scientists only study sexy plants. The TLDW, though, is that even if we have made an objective tool, we apply it subjectively and we interpret the results sometimes through our own biased lens. All of which brings me back to the upset academics at University of Auckland. Their letter didn't bother to counter their quoted claim from the working group that science has been used in the service of atrocities. Indeed, they actually agree with it, writing, science itself does not not colonize. It has been used to aid colonization. Great. So you agree. Science has been used to colonize. <laughs> Super. Uh, they go on to say that science is actually great, which I'm sure that the government working group agrees with, which is why they didn't suggest just doing away with science class altogether and replacing it with a dance class or something instead. The academics wrap up by taking a shot at indigenous knowledge, writing that it is critical for the preservation and perpetuation of culture and local practices and plays key roles in management and policy. However, in the discovery of empirical universal truths, it falls far short of what we can define as science itself. To accept it as the equivalent of science is to patronize and fail indigenous populations better to ensure that everyone participates in the world's scientific enterprises. Indigenous knowledge may indeed help advance scientific knowledge in some ways, but it is not science. This is the point where the letter went from weirdly hostile considering that you agree that science is a tool that's been used to oppress indigenous populations to, oh, that's why you're bad. Okay, this video is already um, running really long because I haven't even got to the meat of things yet. So I'm actually going to end it here. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the idea that Mataranga is fine as culture, but severely lacking as science. 
Hi, friends. Post-production Rebecca here. If you would rather not wait until next week for part two on this topic, head on over to patreon.com slash Rebecca and sign up. Patrons of all levels have immediate access to both parts of this topic, all wrapped up in one convenient video, which I'm giving them totally ad-free as a token of my thanks and a salute to those amongst us who have longer attention spans than most. Uh, The direct link to that video is in the description below. Thanks.